In this video, I'll show you how to add a search bar to your Elementor header section for free. Let's get straight into it. For example, I'll show you how to create a search bar here on your Elementor website for free. OK, so since we're in the e-commerce store, I've gone for a similar styling to what you'd see on Amazon. So our customers can search for a product and hopefully find what it is they're looking for and hopefully make a purchase. If you want to create a similar setup on your Elementor website, I'll leave a link to the plugin I'll be using in the description below. And with that being said, let's head over to our dashboard. So throughout this video, I'm assuming you've already got your header section sorted. If you haven't, I'll leave a link on screen to how you can create a header section in Elementor for free. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and install the plugin that we'll need to create our free search icon. So we'll head over to plugins and then add new, and then we'll just search for HT mega, and then we'll go ahead and install this particular plugin. Okay, so we'll navigate over to HT mega add-ons and settings. Let's navigate over to elements. And we just want to make sure we enable this search widget here. Let's hit save settings. OK, so with that out of the way, let's head over to our home page and let's go ahead and edit our header section. OK, so let's go ahead and search for search. And it's this HT search form here. So I'm seeing this option because I'm using Elementor Pro. If you're not using Elementor Pro, we'll just go ahead and use this HT search widget. So we can just drag it into our required position. So I'm going to actually create a new column and I'm going to place my search bar here. Let's delete this and let's actually hide this entire column. OK, so we're going for an Amazon style search bar here. All right, so this looks good. So let's click on our search icon and let's go ahead and customize this. So first, let's customize the placeholder. So since this is an e-commerce based site, I'm just going to say search products. From where it says style, we can actually choose from five different styles. So we can scroll through just quickly. OK, but I like the default style number one. So let's go ahead and hit the style tab here to customize this. So submit button. For the background, we'll say um, green. OK, that looks good. And you can go ahead and tweak the width. You can tweak the typography and um, the hover state, the input and so on. But I'll leave you to go ahead and play with that settings. So let's hit save changes. And now let's go ahead and preview our new search bar. OK, and this looks great. So now let's go ahead and have a look at how we can create a search bar using custom code. So, for example, this is our search bar here. And as you can see, we've actually custom coded this search bar. And the reason why we've done this is so that it would only return results which matches a particular post type. In our case, this is the post post type, all right? So we could essentially do a similar thing if we only wanted it to return products, all right? So say you've got um, blog posts and you've got products in your e-commerce store. When a prospect searches for something, maybe you only want to show them products that matches that particular query, right? So this is where it comes in handy. Again, this might complicate things slightly. I'll leave the link in the description below with a blog post explaining the individual elements of the code. But essentially, let's quickly go through it. All right. So the first thing you'd want to change is your website name here. Right. So where it says action, you'd enter in your website name here. For example, in our case, this is AOVOP.com. So when a customer or prospects hits the search button, it will basically search this particular website here. All right, we've got some styling element here. The main thing is here again, where it says form input search. And then here it says name. So by default, whenever you search something on WordPress, it usually has a question mark, search equal, and then the query. So let's quickly test this out. And then we'll come back over here and try to explain a bit more. OK, so here you can see the code live. So here is our website name and then we've got question mark search equal. And then this is a search term that we've used, but we've also specified and the post type is post. So if we wanted to limit this to products, let's quickly get the product um, type. I'm guessing it's just product, but let's double check this. OK, and as you can see, that's working fine. So I just change the post type here to product. Let's say, for example, you're running a website and you're using a custom post type. Then here where it says post type, you can actually specify that particular post type. So when a prospect searches, it will only query that particular post type. So let's head back over to the code again. And then the input is here we're specifying the post type. So post type and then the value is post. So if we change this to product, like I just showed you on the example. So if we change this to product, 
then it will only query the product, all right? And then we've got the action, which is to submit. We've got the button here. And we've just got some CSS class and then we'll, we'll allow um, users to submit. Like and subscribe for more videos like this. And if you've got any questions, leave it in the comment box.